I've been doing a lot of real estate photography recently, and what I have noticed is that a lot of people shoot their own images, which is fine. It probably saves time. It definitely saves money. Um, but I wanted to give you guys a few tips for if you're shooting your own houses that you're selling, or if you're shooting pictures of your own house and you're selling it yourself, just some few general tips for shooting inside and getting good images that make your house look amazing. The first thing is you're going to want a wide lens on your camera. The kit lens, an 18 to 55, I typically talk about how much I dislike it and how bad it is for portraits and how bad it is for low light, but it will actually work okay for real estate. So you can just stick with the 18 to 55 kit lens and the camera doesn't really matter too much. It's not like you're shooting fast action or in super low light or anything crazy. So the camera doesn't make a good picture with real estate photography. The wider the lens, the better. And the higher in the camera, um, typically the better it can shoot in really, really low light. So if you have a really dark house, then a better camera will benefit you some. I think the easiest way to show you is to just go take some pictures of some rooms. So I'm going to go into a room and I'm going to shoot like I see most people shooting. And then I'm going to shoot like I shoot and we can see the difference. So this is the first room we're going to photograph. So what a lot of real estate photographers do is they go into a house and they just start flipping on lights. It doesn't matter what it is or what it looks like. They just start turning them on. So I turned on all these lights. I'm going to turn on this overhead light and turn the fan off maybe. Um, and we're just going to take this picture, just like walk in and take a picture. No setup, no thinking, no method. Just go in and take a picture. All right, so we have a picture. A lot of the times people walk in, they take a picture and they leave. But if you just, just take a few seconds to set some things up, you can really improve this picture. So right now we've got lamps, we've got bed lamp, we've got ceiling lamp, and we've got natural light. We've got four different light sources in here and none of them match. They're all different colors, they're all different tones. It just doesn't look good. So the first thing I do when I go into a room is I start turning lights off. All right. So now I have all of the lights off. So hopefully the light will match in this room. It's all from one source, which is outside. It's the, um, just the sunlight, the ambient light coming in. And we're going to take this and see what happens. All right. So you can see that this image is a lot more inviting. It looks a lot brighter in this room. It looks more soft and not so contrasty and just kind of mixed lighting. Um, but the last thing that I do when I go in rooms is I turn the lights off and then I open all the blinds. So you might worry that the house has old windows or that the windows aren't in great condition or clean, but it really doesn't matter too much because your windows are going to be blown out, which means they're going to be completely white. But that can be a good thing because it makes it look like there's just natural light pouring into the room and it's just super soft and inviting. All right, so you can see that this image, it looks pretty nice. It looks like a nice bedroom and there's a pretty big contrast from this image to the first image. So now I wanna show you my camera. Um, this camera, it's just a few hundred dollars. It comes with the kit lens, that's an 18 to 55. I hate the kit lens and I never ever recommend it, but for real estate, it can work. For portraits, it's terrible. For low light, it's terrible. For real estate, it has some potential and it's cheap. So you can get these images with just like a $300 camera. Um, so I'm gonna show you my camera and it's a lot more than $300. And I'm gonna show you why. So you can see that this image is a lot wider. You can see more of the room and it makes the room look bigger. Um, my camera also does better in low light, which means if you're in an old house with no light at all and it's just gross feeling in there, um, my camera can shoot with very little light. I um, mean, my lens can too. So the difference in a $300 camera and a $3,000 camera um, is mine shoots better in low light and the lens I have is a special lens that's made to shoot this kind of environment. That's really wide, but with very low distortion. So here's the next room that I wanna photograph. It's a little bit bigger and it has a lot more mixed light. There's lamps everywhere, there's the overhead light. So I'm gonna take this like most people would and we'll see what it looks like.
So what you can see here is that there's a lot of light sources. There's lamps everywhere, there's an overhead light. It's just kind of confusing. It's not very soft, it's not very inviting. It doesn't look like this room gets a lot of light in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start turning lights off. So now it's a lot darker and you can tell because I'm a lot darker. But we're gonna take this picture and we're gonna see what this looks like. So this does look a little bit better. There's not as much mixed lighting. It looks a little bit more softer and more natural, but we can definitely use some more light. So I'm going to walk around. I'm gonna open the blinds of all the windows and I might even open the front door and just leave it open so more light comes in. All right, so you can tell that it's a whole lot brighter and we're going to take this picture now. So this is much better. It's a lot more natural. There's more light coming in. There's not mixed lighting or harsh shadows. It just looks like a nice room. It's very soft and it's just pleasing to the eye. So now we're going to take a picture with my camera and just see what the difference is. So with my camera and this lens specifically, you can see the entire room. You can see almost 180 degrees and it just makes the room look a lot bigger and more inviting. So those are the two rooms that I wanted to show you. Um, they're pretty typical rooms. There's nothing crazy about them. I think it's pretty similar to what you will run into on a day to day basis. Uh, so just remember to stand back, get a really wide shot, let as much natural light in as possible, turn the lights off, and I think you'll be good. Um, if you have a higher end house, if you're selling a house for a lot of money, you might want to hire a professional that has the wider lens and can shoot in lower light. And then I think the biggest difference in shooting the pictures yourself and hiring someone is most professional photographers shoot in what's called a raw format, which allows for more flexibility in post-processing or editing. So most cameras shoot in what's called JPEG. That's what your phone shoots in, most cameras shoot in that. Um, and it's very standard, it's very easy to share and upload those pictures, and they're just ready to go. But most professionals shoot in what's called raw format, which is just the raw information, and it gives you a lot more flexibility when you're editing on the computer. So what you will notice is that your pictures might not look as good as the professional's pictures, just because they're editing their raw files on the computer before sending them to you. So they can adjust things and tweak photos just to make them look even better. It also might benefit you to hire a professional if you need the pictures quickly and you don't have time to do it. My turnaround time is usually one day. I can go in, I can take the pictures, I bring them home, I edit them, I upload them, and I send them straight to you, and it's super quick. Um, I can also do aerial pictures from the air. I can do virtual tours where you can click and you can go room to room to room and see 360 degrees. I can do highlight videos. Um, and I can do all of that really, really quickly and pretty inexpensively. So you can see in some circumstances, it might benefit you to hire a professional photographer, but for a lot of houses, um, especially the ones that aren't selling for quite so much, it might be just as easy to do it yourself. So follow these tips and be sure and follow my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page and join my email list because I'm sending out photography tips all the time that would definitely benefit you.